nobody would give Ursa a hard time for hiring Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh in the wanted, Ring of Honor for the franchise, right? Yeah, I mean, he's, an old, sure. I, he's in the Ring of Honor. I'm pretty sure he is. He uh, was, it's, and so is uh, Jeff Saturday. So you know, we already know that that interests Ursa. Um, Harbaugh wanted the Vikings job, tried to get the Vikings job. Hard to tell a little bit. Uh, a few years ago, but he was at a different point. Michigan has since, I think, uh, repaid him and made him feel special again. And obviously he's got a, as we're recording this, we don't know exactly where the ranking is, but a top CFP team that's going to come out here in 20 minutes, new CFP rankings. So he's got things rolling in Michigan. But if Harbaugh wants to get back to the NFL, this would be a really interesting spot for him. The one thing he doesn't have is a ready-made quarterback there, but most teams don't. So He didn't have one in San Francisco, and he created it. Yeah, now, I mean, Alex was there, but he convinced him to stay, and then he resurrected his career. He is in the Colts Ring of Honor, and he only was there three seasons as a player. I guess 94, 95, 96, technically four, 94 to 97. Colts Ring of Honor is actually pretty incredible. It's like Unitas. Uh, don't see Unitas. Do you see Jim Robert or say Jim's dad, Dungey, Harrison, Edron James, Eric Dickerson, Marshall Falk, Saturday, Polian. Manning, Wayne, Freeney, Mathis. Probably want to throw Unitas in there, but uh, they might have forgot about him. Feels like Ursay just with a lot of Jim Ursay guys. A lot now, he did Ursa. say I've been running this team for 50 years. I know what I'm doing, or something like that. Yeah. I mean, they the, the family's 50 years. Isn't he like 68? Well, I, yeah. I would imagine the family, the family's had it for 50 years. So in Ursay's mind, he's been around it since you know he was a kid. Uh I don't think it's crazy. Now, when you read that Michigan article. And I, 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 I believe that they're going to beat Ohio State this year. And just watching college football, Georgia's clearly the best team, but it does feel like he could win a playoff game and be right there again and have back-to-back -back seasons be in the playoffs. He's making huge cash. Oh, absolutely, he could. I agree with you on that. So, you know, it's hard to tell. Was last year, it's like, was he scratching his itch or was it more revenge? It, it's, it's hard to put him and figure Jim out, right? So it's really hard to know. Because if you told me he's back in the interview cycle, even if they have an incredible year, I'll believe it. If you tell me he's turning people down now that he feels like we're rolling and this is my this is where I'm meant to coach, or does he have to like scratch that itch again? Or is this just an opportunity? Because they do have a lot of good players on the team. And Chris Ballard's the GM. Now would he want his own GM? You know, they're just because part of getting the Michigan job is he was going to work for the dude from Goldman Sachs, right? Like that guy was hiring him. Jim wasn't bringing in his own guy. Right. But now, and Jim had just come off a of playoff. Brandon, like, I think. Was that the guy's name? Yeah, Questy. Oh, 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 Questy in it. Sorry, I was thinking of, there was the the guy who was a, the, the, anyway, never mind. So has Jim, even though he's, you know, rolling again at Michigan, lost the juice to be like Sean Payton if you want to hire, like, Let's say Sean Payton's interviewing. It's basically like, unless it's with Jerry Jones, like I, I get to pick everybody in this team. It does feel that probably Ursa is like, listen, we'll give you eight, nine million, you know, probably more than that, 12, 15 million dollars. But Chris is going to help you pick the players. He knows what he's doing. Maybe Jim has at this point in time realized that that's an easier way to go, having dealt with a situation where, you know, I guess he's seen it both, right? He had Balky, even though he had a lot of influence, especially at the quarterback position. But he has technically been the owner, GM, and head coach when you're the head, when you run a college program, right? Like there's yeah. no player that comes into Michigan that he doesn't ultimately, even if his position coach is the guy that wants him, he's got to give the okay for them to sign him. That's the best part about college football that like Kirby Smart is the fucking GM owner and head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Saban, Lincoln Riley, Ryan Day, like it's a pretty good job once they pay you NFL money. It it takes a little more time because the recruiting aspect that of it is different than signing guys and you know the draft, but because you got to spend so much time getting to know, like kind of kiss guys' ass and lose a lot of people, but still, like you get to pick who you want, right? Like ultimately, Jim's decision why this young quarterback, why he did that thing this year is because he picked that young quarterback, right? That's the guy he probably wanted, and then like that's just that's a powerful thing that we see in the NFL. Sometimes there's back and forth and fight, which is natural. I want this guy. You want that guy. And the best operations, like a lot of people keep saying is like, 
Did Seattle get a little lucky on Geno? It was clearly, you know, they acted like they liked Drew Locke. And my take was, I bet John Schneider really liked Drew Locke in the draft, but he's not dumb enough to know, like, it was probably clear in training camp that Drew Locke was not as good as the other guy. And ultimately, their job is to try to win games. So they made it pretty easy to see and This guy's way better. John ain't going to fight it. And then everyone benefits. Like, ultimately, you always benefit, whether it's college. The difference is usually in the NFL – the GM in some places does have a lot of juice. They can tell you who to start or at least kind of get in the owner's ear. In college, like every guy on the field is – like there's no booster forcing you to start a guy. Like it's it's your head coach. Yeah. It's in a weird way, I think Ballard, who Jim Mercer said is definitely not getting fired, and Jim Harbaugh are kind of a match in terms of just style. I think they would actually work. The problem is I it does feel like a GM would be kind of nuts to – want to hire Jim unless he's very secure about a, he's very secure about how he and Jim would work together or B he just doesn't have a choice. Right. Cause I do think fundamentally what Ballard would want a team to look like and what Jim would want a team to look like are kind of probably the same or similar. At least the, the Colts have been when they've been good over the last couple of years, like when they've had their moments, I think I saw his record was like 40, 33 and one. So that they have been a competitive team. They have been a physical run the ball down your throat team, not rely too much on the pass. Right. And you could even say the Michigan I'm watching now has relied a little more on the pass these last couple of years. Their, their run game is still dominant, but their running back's really good. Yeah. And they, they had like two they guys had Zach Charbonnet too. And he couldn't beat out those guys. Well, the guy they got now is Blake uh, Quorum. Yeah. He's a stud. Uh, Johnny Unitas was a Baltimore Colt. So. Wow. I guess not. A, the uh, Remember, we were talking about crazy owner things. Jim Ursay, you know, he got the Colts by trading the Rams to the owner of the Rams. They traded teams. I I, I do like stories from the 60s and then 70s on them. sports more. Than, then he uh, moved them in the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure that story goes right. Just like moved everybody out in the middle of the night. They left Baltimore in the middle of the night. Truly middle of the night. Pat just packed so, up so, so, society had a little more. Uh, Unknown factor back in like the seventies. Shit, you're like, what just happened? It's just, it just happened. Well, yeah, I think. Now. Yeah, yeah. I I think um, NFL teams were were uh, run like uh, like just like your local. You know, every like town is gets like a few just like just business guys that are just you know they could just they got enough money that they're not going to lose everything by doing some nutty things and starting a restaurant that doesn't make any money. And I've got one guy in mind who I love. But uh, it feels like NFL teams were run like smaller, like small businesses. It used to because that's what they were. They were not these multi-billion-dollar corporations. You know, they were run like like Mattress Mac runs. You know what I mean? Like it was Mattress Mac. That guy. That guy owned all the teams. Well, think about this. Like Eddie gets a lot of credit, right, for being on the forefront of the nice jet and, and taking care of players. Yeah, I bet there were some owners in the league that understood like treating employees is a you know, and especially your star talent, it means a lot. But you might not have had the money. Like, if you were just richer and willing to do that, you had a big advantage. Now, there's just a bar. Like, you don't have a choice. I mean, it wasn't that long ago in the NBA. Cuban was like, Mark Cuban, first guy to just get his own charter jet, wipe it out, only players only. Then, like, everyone followed suit. I'll never forget going to Disneyland. It's the only time I've ever been. 95, maybe. And getting on a Southwest flight from Sacramento to Los Angeles and me holding on like or right behind my dad he'd be like oh Lamont Murray and it was the Clippers <laughs> the, the Clippers were just on the team like that's just that wasn't that that was when we were alive you know it's just an NBA team could be on your fucking flight now they were the last but these stories I'm a sucker for just old shit stories like the Jim Harbaugh team that he played for the Colts is a completely different world than the NFL we we are part of, talk about, follow, and discuss. Yeah. Now, yeah, the conversation about the artificial turf and how we should only play uh, NFL games on grass now, while legitimate, let's not forget what the turf was. I'm not saying they should be happy with the artificial turf that tears everybody's ACLs, but there was a time when Harbaugh played. These guys were basically playing on concrete and like putt putt golf was uh, carpeting. Right? It was like little low fucking hotel carpeting i think the stadium where the eagles played before they built the link had concrete Veterans. under yeah. the uh and that's where michael irvin was broke his neck or whatever and was well, carted on that was the ended. field member where herm and and uh 
was it Andy Reid? They were like, we we just this field is we are not playing on this field. It's a preseason game. They're like, it, uh, it, I thought it was Billick. Wasn't it like Ravens, Eagles, and the carpet was like uneven, and Billick just walked off the field? Could, maybe that also happened. I just remember Herm telling the story, maybe on the podcast. Of I him think and Andy like meeting at midfield, like they just both got back on. They got back on the bus and went back to. I think it would have been Baltimore. Oh yeah, I guess Herm might have been the Eagles coach at the time. Uh, Is that possible? No, Herm, he never it coached definitely happened the Eagles. with Herm also, so maybe it was a. I think well, Herm played for those Eagles teams in the '80s. I can't even imagine what the facilities. I mean, what the whole thing. Billick would Billick would definitely do that. He's like, not the wrong thing to do. Meanwhile, Raiders and Packers with poor Matt LaFleur in his first year played on an 80 yard field, whatever the hell that was. Remember that? <laughs> and Gruden wanted everyone to break legs and LaFleur refused. You know what I was thinking about today? If you, if, if you, and they tried to alpha LaFleur and LaFleur kind of didn't give in. Yeah. If, if you traded, uh, four, if you traded four picks and players for a coach and that coach led you to the Super Bowl, would you say the trade worked? Do you win? Yeah, you win the championship. I, I mean, I'd say most people subscribe to the old adage of whatever you have to do to win the championship is right. good. And I tend to agree if it. I subtract bubble championships, which I don't yeah, count. So the Anthony Davis did not. It was a failure. But I would say historically, every like Stafford, everything they did for that championship, no matter what happens moving forward, the Rams will can always say they were champion in the NFL. Yeah, is it a poor reflection of Gruden that the because what's crazy about that Super Bowl was they traded all the shit to get Gruden. He won the championship. But the the Raiders went to the championship, too. They like, traded Gruden, and they're like, yeah, look. Now, the difference was he they probably lose the game because Gruden's on the other side, right? I, I See, to me, both those teams are the equipment. They do. I think it's historically because, like, the Bucks knew all their calls. Remember, I think Lynch has talked yeah, about it. Like, yeah, they knew yeah. every check. But it's a little like Larry Coker on each side. Right. Like you just inherit a sweet team. So what's his name that took over the Raiders? Like they were already loaded. And then most of the Bucks guys that are anti Gruden or people around football were like, well, yeah, he just fucking inherited Tony Dungy's sweet squad. They were already competing to win Super Bowls. You know, was he the difference? Maybe, but could it have just been like that was their time? Like if you would have taken over the Eagles in like 05, could they have just won the Super Bowl instead of having Andy Reid? Possibly, right? If you had just taken over the Patriots in 2015, could. Nate Hackett have won the Super Bowl that year? Possibly. But that, like three years later, it could have been a disaster. If you're just handed, if Tim Cook leaves tomorrow and someone's handed Apple, like there's a decent chance for a couple of years they're just going to keep rolling, then it could crumble. Right. Like, if I just hand Sean, if I fired Dan Campbell, Spielman, every fucking guy in the Lions building and handed Sean Payton the Lions, more than likely the Lions are maybe a little better next year, but they're probably not great, right? I just hand them the Chargers, please, for the sake of everybody. But on the flip side, when you're handed the Raiders and they're actually pretty decent and then you really suck, is that a reflection of the coach? Uh, it's a reflection of more than the coach. Who Players? Just the whole thing, right? I mean, but we saw the players have success. Yeah, that's true. 